as someone who teaches communication skills, one of the most common questions I get is whether you can really learn to be a better communicator or whether communication skills are sort of an inborn trait like eye color. I recently came across a piece of video of myself from when I was only 15 years old that lets us examine this question in kind of a humorous way. So in this video, you're gonna watch a 55 year old man criticize the communication skills of his 15 year old self. Hi everybody, this is Bruce Lambert from How Communication Works. This is a channel where I teach you about communication skills so you can improve your relationships, succeed at work, be more confident, and lead a more fulfilling life. I recently came across a video of myself when I was on television when I was 15 years old. Now when I was 15 years old, I was very interested in archeology span and I actually went to archeology span camp. Yes, that was a thing back in 1980, archeology span camp. And because I was interested, I went. And one year I was down there, after the regular camp ended, I kind of stayed for extra time because I was an archeology span nerd. And people from the television show 321 Contact which is a public television educational show related to Sesame Street and Electric Company and Zoom. These are all old public television shows. You know, uh, Electric Company and Zoom you may have never heard of, but 321 Contact, for people my age, my friends my age will remember this show. So a television crew came down to where I was in Campsville, Illinois, and I ended up doing a segment with them on archeology. span So I'm gonna go over that segment now, and we're gonna take a look at my communication skills as a 15-year-old boy. All right. Is a junior so, high school student who's been digging up ancient civilizations here I am. right here in the United States. He is taking the volume to an down in the Illinois River, which has been gradually washing away along the shoreline, revealing the remains of people. <laughs> uh, so I guess anyone who looked at their 15-year-old self would think it was pretty funny. So look at the way I'm dressed. I've got just jeans. I'm pretty sure I remember that red t-shirt being my favorite red t-shirt. And I'm just in these really dirty jeans. But, you know, I was doing archaeology. I was literally digging in the dirt all day long. So I'm sure I wasn't very clean. And the woman on the right is the woman from this public television show, 321 Contact, whose television name was Trini Dot. Uh, and I think her name was Katrina or Trini or something like that. So here I am. Let's, let's look at that haircut. Is a junior high school student who's been digging oh up ancient God. civilizations right here in the United States. He is taking us to an island in the Illinois River. Oh my God. Of course, I kind of still look like that. The same facial features. I'm sort of licking my lips here. But the haircut, the haircut is just absolutely outrageous. Although I'm sure I thought I looked great at the time. And I've worn glasses since about fifth grade. So here I must have been wearing contact lenses. You know, we didn't actually row out to this island. This was just done for the purposes of TV. We took a motorboat out to the island, then we just did this segment rowing. And I could have rowed the boat by myself, but that's the way television works. Which has been gradually washing away along the shoreline, revealing the remains of people who lived here thousands of years ago. I asked Bruce, what causes this erosion? Well, there are a lot of things that cause erosion. Like what? One of the major reasons is because Nowadays, there's a lot of things that need to be transported along by boat, carrying grain or oil or just pleasure boats that come by. And they have these really big engines that generate really big waves. And they come and they wash up on the shoreline. And they take, as they wash up on the way back, they take away soil. And the bigger the, the barge or something like that, brings, makes a bigger wave and takes away a lot of the soil. Can you find stuff like, say, once the... <laughs> so my voice is kind of high. It hadn't completely changed yet. But... I think it's clear even from this first little segment, you know, I could communicate reasonably well in complete sentences. In fact, you know, the reason I got this gig is because they actually came down to Campsville to do this with another person. And then they met me. And because I had the gift of gab, they picked me to do this segment instead of this other girl that was going to do it. I'm sure she's still upset with me to this day. Allison, if you're out there, give me a call. The waves go out. It helps us because it takes away soil instead of having to dig it with a shovel. It takes it away, uh -huh. and you just come upon it. You say, "Hey, look at this! The, the, yeah, the river's uncovered this for me, and it's really a lot better than having to dig and dig and dig and dig." But you let the river do it for you. Places the objects they've been finding uh, were left by people who lived here almost 2,000 years ago. Middle or late woodland Indians that in, in, inhabited this area. What are these kids doing? They're digging. <laughs> so all of this was staged, but. 
And this is stage two. He didn't just suddenly find something when we were watching. Really? Yeah. Listen to how high my voice is. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm digging a fire pit. How do you know it's a fire pit? Well, you can tell by the coloring there. Yeah. It's much, much darker than it is around it. And you can see there's modeling of the dark pit. So here it's going along. Let's wait till skip forward until I talk some more. <laughs> a what? A projectile point. Oh. Oh, so here we've, this is all staged. She didn't really find this right then. We've stuck it in the ground and then so we could find it for the TV cameras. Oh, wow. Oh, that's pretty. A what? A projectile point. Oh, an arrowhead. A projectile point. You're not sure. It's broken off there. So we correct her. I guess some people who know me would say, you know, I'm still correcting people. I was correcting people when I was 15 years old. I'm still correcting people now. Um, but it's a projectile point because we don't know because the base of it is broken off. We don't know whether it could have been a, a spear tip or an arrow tip or, or even a knife without seeing the base of it. On the bottom, and you're not sure if it was used on an arrow or on a spear, so you just call it a projectile point. He showed me an excavation where you can see the layers of mud deposited on this island over the last 2,000 years. <laughs> Almost five feet down is where they've been finding the artifact. How come this is so much lighter than okay. this? Okay, below here down to about here. There's another soil and texture change. Yeah. And this is when the Indians lived here. This is when they inhabited the island. How do you know that? Because this is where they found all the artifacts. From here oh. down, they started finding them here. And they um, had stopped finding them down here near the base of the square. OK, now, if in 40 years we built up this much earth, and in just one year we built up this much, and it just seems to be getting higher, does that mean that the earth is getting bigger? It would appear to be so, but it's not. <laughs> it would appear to be so. What kind of 15-year-old talks that way? So, I mean, I could explain things reasonably well, even at age 15. So I guess this would be some evidence for the hypothesis that you're born with communication skills rather than learning them all. I mean, both my parents are good talkers, so I'm sure I learned something from them, but I'm not sure how, how I learned how to talk this way when I was 15 years old. It was it was about this age, or maybe the next year when I joined the speech team, when my communication skills were recognized by one of my teachers. Every time this much dirt is added here, it's taken away from somewhere else, upriver, or across the river. So, where it's not getting bigger, it's just moving from place to place. Hey Bruce, come here, look at this. So I don't even know this guy. These guys were all like four or five years older than me, but of course this is all set up for television. Can I see it? What is it? Please, please. Top of a pot. Look at that. Yeah, look at that marking, too. It's cord mm -hmm. marking. Yeah. They yeah. scratched it down look the side, uh -huh. put nodes yeah. in it here. Pinched it. Yeah, he didn't just wade out into the river and find that. But that's uh, show business. Top here? Uh-huh. That was the top of the pot. Mm. Look at that. They went, you can see where they poked holes in there. See those marks in there? So here I am back at the lab cleaning this stuff up. This is actually where they really met me. I had I had gone down to archaeology camp and then all the people I went to camp with went home and I wanted to stay a while longer. So I stayed for two more weeks working in this lab where I was washing these uh, bones that had been found in a burial mound. And that's where they met me. Uh, and then that's how I got this little opportunity. Sticking a stick oh, to there. Okay, stuck this one uh -huh. like into the clay. Yeah, and you, if you turn it over, see on the other side. Uh -huh. All the pieces that are found are then each washed to re reveal. So, yeah, I sat there at that screen and washed Indian bones all summer. Then each piece and here they're being marked. And what kind of tools they use, but how can you tell what they look like? Well, we could tell by their bones what they look like. We can't tell exactly, but we can tell. This bone is 2,000 years old, and it's a leg bone. This person was six feet tall. Six feet tall 2,000 years ago? Yes. Yeah. So at that time, I could actually identify almost every human bone just from a fragment because I washed so many of them that summer. I've forgotten, although I know that is a femur. It's not that hard to recognize a femur. Weren't people back then like smaller and short? Can you tell about them from their bones? Well, from looking at their teeth, hmm. you can tell what they ate. Or we can guess what they ate. Do you see how ground down they are? You think they ate something, some kind of meal that they ground. And so they would get this grind, ground down stuff in their mouth. And they grind down their teeth, you know, like corn, corn and nuts uh -huh. and stuff like that. 
I didn't explain that very well. It's actually the, the stone that they were grinding the corn with would get mixed in with the grain, and that's what would grind down their teeth, not the, not the grain itself. I cannot believe that these people were living here 10,000 years ago. They were building all these beautiful houses and, and villages. I thought they the same thing with me. I thought there was no one here. I didn't know anything happened before Columbus or before the people were here. I thought there were just trees out along the edges. They found cultural debris. They built this house to look like one built here by an ancient civilization, more than 6,000. That means that a thousand digging us up. I wonder what they find. Maybe glass. <laughs> or plastic cups. Or steel. Um, aluminum sink. Styrofoam. Um, plastic garbage bags, right? Silver. So there you have it. 15-year-old Bruce at archaeology camp. <laughs> I think that, you know, what do I learn from this? It's pretty clear to me that I had some decent communication skills even at age 15, and that they were enough for these people from this television show to recognize and then put me on this little segment. Um, so where does that leave us in terms of whether communication skills are born in or learned during our lives. And I think like most things, it's a combination of, of nature and nurture. You know, when I teach people empathy, there's often people in the audience that think, well, you either got it or you don't. You know, empathy is like, you know, height or eye color, you know, or skin color. It's like an inborn trait. And it can't be learned after you're born. And I definitely think that that's not true. And I think there's plenty of scientific evidence that that's not true, as well as evidence from our ordinary experience. I think the way to think about communication skill is that it is part born in. You have some innate or intrinsic capacity which maybe sets your baseline level of skill and your and maybe it also determines to some extent your capacity to to get better. Just like all of us have a different level of sort of intrinsic athletic ability or musical ability or mathematical ability or artistic ability, it's the same thing for communication skill. But just because some of us have a greater level of intrinsic athletic ability doesn't mean that we can't all get better at some athletic activity. Like some of us might be just intrinsically uh, better basketball players or baseball players or golfers or swimmers or dancers or something like that. But all of us, if we were to take lessons and practice diligently, would get better than we are. So you can think of us as sort of starting at different points along some kind of continuum with the best people having a kind of head start, but that all of us, if we practice, we can improve from, from where our own baseline starting point was. So when I look at my 15-year-old self, as well as just thinking I look sort of silly uh, and, and high-voiced, I think that I had some you know, intrinsic skill at communication, which I can only thank my parents for, and I didn't do anything to earn or deserve or learn. But shortly after this, you know, as a, when I was about a sophomore in high school, my English teacher, Mrs. Morehouse, uh, invited me to be on the speech team. And from that point, I actually sort of began to intentionally improve my communication skills. And that's never really stopped. So I, I won some awards on the speech team and championships. And then I was the class speaker for my high school graduation. And then I went to college and I figured, well, I'm good at communication and communication is gonna be important in the future. It was really no, no more complicated than that. And so I got my undergraduate degree in speech communication and then I got a master's degree in speech communication and then I got a PhD in speech communication, all of which continued to improve my skill as I practiced even more. And then I went on to teach for 30 years and, and do consulting where I do a lot of public speaking and all of that continue to hone these skills to where they are today. So my overall conclusion is that communication skills are partly born in an intrinsic and inherited from our parents and, and partly the product of learning and practice. So it's not a revolutionary conclusion, but I thought you might be amused by watching me watch my 15 year old self. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like this kind of video, go ahead and hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, go on over to howcommunicationworks.com and give us your email address. We'll send you an ebook on empathy, which people seem to like and enjoy. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.